Hello viewers, welcome again. The Archbishop of Canterbury, spiritual leader of the Anglican Communion, resigned. Justin Welby, once a symbol of hope and stability, left under a cloud of suspicion. His departure sent shockwaves through the Church of England and beyond. The reason? A scandal, long buried, now unearthed. Welby's resignation came amidst mounting pressure. Accusations of a cover-up, whispers of complicity, and demands for accountability echoed through the hallowed halls of Lambeth Palace. The weight of the scandal proved too heavy, forcing the Archbishop's hand. The timing, just months after the coronation of King Charles III, added another layer of drama. Welby, instrumental in the historic ceremony, now faced a personal reckoning. The world watched, stunned, as the man who crowned a king was brought low by allegations he sought to suppress. The Church of England, already grappling with declining attendance and internal divisions, reeled from the blow. The scandal threatened to further erode public trust in the institution. Welby's resignation, a desperate attempt to salvage the Church's reputation, left many wondering if it was too little, too late. At the heart of the scandal lay the spectre of John Smith, a charismatic lawyer and evangelical Christian leader. Smith, a prominent figure in the Iwern camps, a Christian holiday camp for boys, stood accused of horrific acts, physical and sexual abuse inflicted upon vulnerable young men entrusted to his care. The allegations against Smith were not new. Whispers of his depravity had circulated for years, yet a culture of silence and denial allowed him to operate unchecked. Victims, shamed into silence, carried their trauma for decades. Welby's connection to Smith was undeniable. Both men moved within the same evangelical circles. Welby, during his time as a lay leader, had interacted with Smith on several occasions. The question that haunted the Archbishop, what did he know and when? Accusations surfaced that Welby, along with other church leaders, had been aware of Smith's predatory behaviour. It was alleged that they chose to protect the church's reputation over the safety of young men. These allegations, vehemently denied by Welby, ultimately led to his downfall. The contrast was stark. Just months earlier, Archbishop Welby stood on the world stage, a beacon of faith and tradition. He placed the crown upon King Charles III's head, a symbol of continuity and divine right. Now that same Archbishop was mired in scandal. Welby's close relationship with the royal family added another layer of intrigue. Trusted confidant, spiritual advisor, he had played a pivotal role in navigating the transition following Queen Elizabeth II's death. His resignation sent shockwaves through Buckingham Palace. The scandal threatened to cast a shadow over the new king's reign. The Church of England, deeply intertwined with the monarchy, faced a crisis of confidence. The fallout from Welby's resignation had the potential to destabilize an institution already grappling with modernity. The public watched, captivated by the unfolding drama. The juxtaposition of the sacred and the profane, the archbishop's fall from grace, provided a glimpse into the hidden workings of power and faith. The Church of England, a broad church encompassing a spectrum of beliefs, found itself deeply divided. The scandal exposed fault lines that had long simmered beneath the surface. Liberals and conservatives clashed, their differing views on accountability and transparency laid bare. For some, Welby's resignation was a necessary act of contrition, a recognition of the church's failings and a step towards atonement. Others viewed it as an act of self-preservation a desperate attempt to salvage the church's reputation at the expense of truth and justice. The scandal reignited debates about the church's handling of abuse allegations. Calls for independent inquiries, for greater transparency and accountability, grew louder. The church, once seen as a bastion of moral authority, now faced a battle to regain public trust. The impact of Welby's resignation reverberated beyond the church's walls. It served as a stark reminder that institutions, no matter how venerable, are not immune from the failings of individuals. The scandal forced a reckoning, a painful examination of power, faith, and the human cost of silence. A legacy tarnished. Justin Welby, the man who ascended to the highest office in the Anglican Communion, did so with a reputation for compassion and reform. He spoke out against injustice, championed the marginalized, and sought to modernize the church. Now, his legacy lay tarnished. The scandal cast a long shadow over Welby's achievements. His efforts to promote interfaith dialogue, his work on climate change, all paled in comparison to the accusations leveled against him. The man who sought to heal divisions found himself at the center of a storm. Welby's defenders argued that he inherited a toxic culture of secrecy and denial. 
that he, like many others, was unaware of the true extent of Smith's crimes. Yet the stain of the scandal remained, an indelible mark on his tenure as Archbishop. The question lingered. How could a man so seemingly decent, so committed to justice, be implicated in such a scandal? Was it a lapse of judgment, a blind spot, or something more sinister? The answers, elusive and complex, continued to be debated. The weight of silence. The scandal surrounding John Smith and Archbishop Welby's alleged involvement highlighted a chilling truth, the devastating consequences of silence. For decades, victims of Smith's abuse suffered in silence, their voices stifled by fear and shame. The culture of silence within the church, a reluctance to acknowledge uncomfortable truths, allowed Smith's abuse to continue unchecked. Whispers were ignored, allegations brushed aside, and victims silenced. The institution, meant to be a sanctuary, became a breeding ground for abuse. Welby himself acknowledged the church's failings, expressing shame and sorrow for the pain inflicted upon Smith's victims. Yet for many, his words rang hollow. The damage had been done, the trust shattered. The scandal served as a stark reminder that silence is not golden, but rather a weapon that protects abusers and perpetuates cycles of abuse. It highlighted the urgent need for open dialogue, for accountability, and for a culture where victims feel safe to come forward. A crisis of faith. The scandal surrounding Archbishop Welby plunged the Church of England into a profound crisis of faith. For many, it shook the very foundations of their beliefs. How could an institution, founded on principles of love and compassion, be complicit in such horrific acts? The crisis extended beyond the Church's walls. It sparked a wider conversation about faith, accountability, and the abuse of power within institutions. The scandal forced society to confront uncomfortable truths about the nature of abuse, and the systems that enable it. For some, the scandal led to a loss of faith. They turned away from the church, disillusioned and heartbroken. Others clung to their faith, seeking solace and guidance in times of turmoil. The church, once a source of certainty, now grappled with uncertainty and doubt. The crisis of faith extended to the leadership of the church. Could the church, wounded and divided, find a path to healing? Could it regain the trust of its followers and its moral authority? The answers remained elusive, the path forward uncertain. What next for the Archbishop? Justin Welby, once a beacon of hope for the Anglican Communion, now faced an uncertain future. Stripped of his title, his reputation tarnished, he retreated from public life, seeking solace in reflection and prayer. The question lingered, what would become of the former Archbishop? Would he dedicate his remaining years to seeking forgiveness and making amends? Or would he fade into obscurity, haunted by the scandal that defined his tenure? Some speculated that Welby, despite his resignation, would continue to play a role in public life. That his experience, however painful, had equipped him with a unique understanding of the church's failings and the need for reform. Others believed that Welby's time in the spotlight was over, that the scandal had irrevocably damaged his reputation, and that any attempt to re-enter public life would be met with skepticism and scorn. Can trust be rebuilt? The scandal that toppled Archbishop Justin Welby left the Church of England reeling. Trust, once the bedrock of the institution, lay shattered. The question remained, could that trust ever be rebuilt? The task ahead was daunting. The Church needed to confront its past, acknowledge its failings, and commit to a culture of transparency and accountability. It needed to listen to the voices of survivors, offer support and compassion, and work tirelessly to prevent future abuse. The road to redemption would be long and arduous. It would require a fundamental shift in mindset, a willingness to challenge long-held beliefs and practices. It would require courage, humility, and an unwavering commitment to justice. The future of the Church of England hung in the balance. Could it rise from the ashes of scandal, stronger and more resilient? Or would it crumble under the weight of its past? Only time would tell.